In an earlier tutorial where we were working with the screws of index fixing systems, we talked about how important it is to put the screws correctly so that the heads are not damaged. The rules are very simple. First, we need to make a pre-drill so that, in this way, it does not entail more work than necessary to the screw and it does not force us to make greater pressure on the head. The second, and fundamental rule, is to always choose a tip suitable to the drive we have on the screw. And the third, insert the drill completely perpendicular so that it does not come out of the space that has the drive. This way we do not break the screws. This, coupled with the use of good screws, is usually enough to ensure that there are no incidents. The thing is that, sometimes, there are. So in this tutorial we will see how to use the heads that are in bad condition to remove the screws. Basically, we will review what are the known formulas to remove the screws that have a damaged head. As you can see, here we have a head that is badly damaged and this one is not yet. We are going to spoil it. It's a posy drive drive and we're going to use a Phillips bit, introducing it wrongly, so that it will tear the inside of the screw. As you can see, we have not torn it much because this screw head is very hard, it is the ones we usually use. Rather, we're running out of bit. And since we can't do it well like that, we turn to a drill bit. Notice we always tell you that when you buy things that come with screws, check if the screws are of good quality, which is not usually the case. If you use quality screws like these, there's no problem because in general, even if you use the tip badly or even if you over tighten them, they usually endure and survive. But, with screws that are not of good quality, it's a disaster. You automatically destroy their head. So, if the screws are not of quality when you buy them, the best thing you can do is throw them out and put good screws. First traditional solution for removing screws. In this case it is a torque screw. This is a test we can do. We have here a drive that is 30 and that, as you see, does not rotate. In fact, as soon as the tip see it, it also makes its hair stand on end thinking it has to try to move all this. We can't remove it out with the corresponding bit. What we're going to do is use a torx of the following number, a 40, and we are going to see if we're able to stuff it a little so it takes the shape of this screw head. Well, no, this remedy slips and what it does is even more whole. I have used this procedure with Allen bit screws and it is easier because they have more solid grooves. These are smaller grooves that hook the torques and, once we've broken them, it is practically impossible to recover them. Let's go now with this posy number 2 and let's try directly with the tip corresponding bit to see if it will work or not. As you can see, it doesn't come out. The hole is made. Well, let's go to the old resource of using a rubber band so that it fills the hole. When the screw is badly damaged, there's no rubber, no system and no trick to help us. The third classic solution with screws like this one we have here, where the head is a little bit detached, is trying to turn them with a jatong. Of course, the longer and deeper the screw is, the harder it is for these processes to work. In this case, of course, if we have the advantage of having it all ready with the head poking out, it is a lot easier. Well, this screw would be out. Let's see now how to solve what the traditional systems cannot fix. I'm not saying that the classic system doesn't work, the thing is, with the level of damage that we have, it is hard for us to restore it. We need to go to systems that are more effective to solve this.
The solution we have is to convert the drive of the screw into a flat hide screwdriver. We make a notch with the angled grinder and, once we have it, we can insert the screwdriver and turn. As you can see, the screw goes out without any difficulty. We're going to do the same in the case of the Posey drive. As we are working with a pretty thin grinding disc, there is no problem with breaking the head head in excess. In this case, we will use a smaller screwdriver. Once the extraction begins, even if it is not the most orthodox method, we can hook it directly to the screwdriver's chuck and twist it to finish pulling it out faster because they are long screws. These screws are going to be removed with this accessory which is a screw extractor. In general, what I've seen in videos of our colleagues on YouTube is that sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. In this case, I think we can somehow help the work of these screws doing one thing that is not usually done that is cooling the inlet. As when we work with any other metal piece, this can be a good idea to improve their performance. We leave you the link below in case you want to take a look at them or to buy them. This would greatly help us because if you use the link below, we receive a small commission with no additional cost to you. Anyways, it is always good to leave the link there for you to see them in case you want to compare prices or to buy them later in the store. They do not tend to have a high price, and thus, the steel they are made of is of course not even valerian steel or any spectacular steel. It simply serves us to do some occasional jobs. That's why, as I was telling you, we can refrigerate it and see if we can make the extractor work better. We're not going to break these screws. We're just going to imagine that we don't have a hex bit socket to take them out. Thereby we have to figure out how to get them out in another way, as if all the edges were broken. To facilitate the entry of the special drill bit, let's first try to make a hole with a 1 8 bit, using also the thread cutting oil. We see that the drill bit of 1 8 does not pierce well. Let's try with the extractor drill. Always remember when using it that we put it on this side first, the one that does not have a screw. And we select the reverse position on the screwdriver so that it turns backwards. Despite the thread cutting oil, we can't get it to move forward. Let's try another solution that is to put a drill bit of 5 30 seconds, which is a measure like the one that this bit has approximately, and has enough diameter, so that we can put some pressure on it. As you can see, with the drill bit of 5 30 seconds, we can put pressure without breaking it and we can move forward. Let's now apply the drill bit that we had prepared, turning in the opposite direction. And, once we have done the basic hole, we can insert the extractor screw. We continue with the extractor working counterclockwise. We turn and see how easily the screw comes out. To release it, as it is screwed to the head, we need to change the direction of rotation while holding the screw. Look at how the head is. Now it is clear. In this next screw without further ado, after marking the center of the screw to position it as best as possible, we will work directly with the 5 30 seconds bit and, as always, with thread cutting oil. As you can see, it pierces perfectly. We make the hole. We are going to take advantage of it, to insert the extractor screw. We place it, reverse the turn and the screw comes out easily.
Well, as you have seen, the miraculous procedures work only sometimes. It depends a lot on what condition the screw head is. With mechanical procedures such as drilling the screw, either directly with the disc or drilling and drilling a screw against thread, it seems that things are simpler. Solution. Let's try the first options we've seen that are the ones that sometimes work and they give us very little work and, if they don't, we move on to do it in a more professional way to make sure that our screw disappears from sight. But, as I was saying at the star, the best thing you can do is to avoid making the mistake of spoiling heads in the first place. I leave you the link of the extractors below in the description so you can take a look at them and you never lack information about all the things we've been using in each of the videos. It also gives you the possibility to buy them online if you want or look at them to buy them in the store. So, that's it. We hope we get your like, that you subscribe to the channel if you're not still, click the bell to receive notifications, and share this video with all your friends who like DIY.